turn to bear. <laughs> Newbies, turn to bear. Alliances turn to bear. Ten seconds remaining. Newbies turn to pick. Alliances turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I speak for the trees. Newbies turn to pick. Lion. Alliances turn to bear. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Newbies turn to ban. Alliances turn to ban. Yeah. Newbies turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> Alliances turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Rubik. Newbies turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time.
Dragon Knight. Alliances turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Alliances turn to bear. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Oh. Newbies turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Newbies turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds Tide remaining. Hunter. 
Alliances turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds this remaining. Man stands ready. Thank you, Red Eye. Three non-believers on the panel. Proud, full of believers, as they're all screaming Alliance's name. I'm Gareth, joining me as God, and we are here for Game 3. Team Newbie up against Alliance, and we're straight into things. What are you feeling about the draft? I, I like what Alliance did together. The death property to me was like the great mid that was still available when they got that fourth pick. They didn't opt for the puck again, but it gives them a great way to take objectives, control the mid game a lot better where Newbie likes to fight. And then Sven last pick is such a good matchup against the Gyrocopter, even against the Dragonite in a lot of ways. It's just so sustainable. If you get your early game farm, you can do a lot of damage. Lines drawn on the map already. Is he ready for this smoke? It's a very early smoke. Kaka thought they were going to come down bottom lane, but Trana said no. They're going to come through mid, and we're going to scout them out instantly. Observe what up on the high ground, but newbie perfectly ready for this movement and alliance. And don't get too much done with it. Yeah, and they probably know even that there was a ward planted on the high ground there too with that smoke move. So, good positioning from newbie here in the early game rotations, but not done. Come <laughs> right into KP. Telekinesis and the Sunray, this is a lot of damage. They're holding him in place. Olo doesn't have another stun to throw just yet. He's holding him to Ango though. Three seconds until he has another Storm Hammer, but Alliance... Do not commit for it. Well, Newbie, they position themselves all around bottom room, so it's going to be the one block trade-off, bounty for bounty, as we so often see. We will find his so on the DK, uh, DK, DK, Donkey Kong against the Death Prophet towards the mid. Uh, Matchup going to be aided a little bit by the Wisp. Kaka will be able to help out the good old Dragon Knight. Try but... given sentries early to help D Ward his lane potentially. They watch that last game's play. Something you often do is just check those early ward spots, and yeah, KP is going to find it right from the get go. And I imagine that's entirely from watching game replay, seeing those ward spots. As an offlaner, that's like the one key thing you want to see. Where are my opponents planning level one wards? So we saw Kaka from time to time go towards top and try and help out the off a little bit, but he's always spotted out. Gem with RK. He's got the Tenga regen, on the ward, so he's super tanky. He has a point in Kraken. He's just going to heal up all of this harass. It's still good to keep him level one as a lion. KP at least is keeping tabs of both supports. Both of them forced on this lane, and they've also got that nice little Radiant Observer ward up toward top as well. Seeing exactly where they are, and KP is fully aware that he cannot move any closer to that lane or the wave. And what is Bulldog doing down towards the bottom lane? I can see her. <laughs> he a... pulled the wave through the river, like all the way up that ramp to get himself. His first creep wave of the farm. It cost him a lot of mana. He used up, I think, at least four trees to get this here. He will get a level two off this, though. So, overall, good start for him in the off lane. He'll get level two for KP, but this is what you'd expect when you look at these off lanes and what they're against. It's a Nature's Prophet versus a Jewel lane. It's a Tide versus a full on tri lane. I don't think either team is going to be too concerned about their off lane is struggling right now. What's the answer here for Newbie? Is to pull across as well themselves, uh, drag the lane across and reset equilibrium? Start pulling and yeah, they've already gone for the side pull here on the big camp. 
Uh, she'll give him some extra farm, will deny Bulldog any additional creep waves. So Bulldog at level 2, but not much more. He's going to have to summon more treants and pull additional waves if he wants to get more out of this. Ancient's being stacked, but okay, he's yeah, nice. in there. Nice move. He knows this. Like, this already, from the first two minutes, you can tell this is going to be a very passive farmy game, at least for the first 10 minutes, and that's something which... Aki wants to shut down with his warding. He's blocked both the Ancients and the Big Camp by the Secret Shop to prevent farm coming out, and Newbie realistically have to buy additional sentries to combat this. Feels like this mid lane matchup, it's very similar between the two players. S4, Mu, and maybe you can put, you know, Fata in there as well from Team Liquid, the same style of play, the same hero pool, where you know, they, they don't get these flashy heroes, they don't have that massive advantageous matchup between the two mids, they just like to be static, farm a little bit, but maybe a bit different in this game. s is given the Death Prophet, which can try and catch out the DP, but he's evened out by the Wisp. Come across, bottling up Mu and helping him a touch as well. Battle for the rain creeps continues oh. towards the mid. Kaka fumbled the Ancient's aggro a bit here. He's actually going to miss that because twice in a row he accidentally attacked the Ancients when he didn't need to. Takes a lot of damage as a result, so perhaps some game three nerves kicking in there. All in all, just means there's one Ancient stack a minute. Realistically, you're going to cap out the Ancient stacks there before anyone can even farm it. Tide needs levels before he can go for it. Gyrocopter needs time before he can go for it, so. It's not the biggest deal that you mess up, that's because it's not like you can unlimitedly uh, get unlimited stuff. You don't have a spend on a team who can farm it for 10 minutes. And of course, DK can't farm it until he hits level 11 either, so there is that timer they need to hit before they can go for that one. Uh, top lane, still the safe lane trial against this Tidehunter, who's stuck at level 1, and this is the big reason for it. RK has been doing this, you know, time and time again. A nice little aggro drag as well. Yeah. They'll go in with Sunrise Dark into the Storm Hammer as well, and KP will be your first blood. He thought he hit the money, he was like, whoa, this is double creep wave, I'm about to pull my tower, and then he's like, oh no, wait, Alliance, they're actually not gonna let me get this. Error. Yep. No. Normally you give up the first blood at this stage, it's fine in offline, assuming you can take the lane, go in like level 3, but KP getting no XP and now giving up the kill. Not the result he was hoping for, and he's gonna get lifted back again at the top lane. Nice body block, EGM, godlike player gets in with a block, and Arcade with a Sunray again. They've got this stun through the damage. Is it quite there, the Sunray? And they're gonna get in for the EGM. A final projectile thrown from the Rubik. Okay. And KP paying for his insolence on this top lane. Now we can call this newbie lane a problem lane. Like being level one for a little while, sometimes just gonna happen when you're against a trial lane. But the kills now, missing out on getting that farm, very costly. And on the side of the line, you've got a nature's profit. About hit level four. Phase boot already up. 10 CS, six denies. Huge discrepancy all of a sudden between these off laners. The big old difference. And of course, mid lane just keeps trading off farm, bottom lane, Bulldog continues across there. But uh, equally, where... the supports on Newbie, how are they doing? Uh, newbie supports not great, Kai is still very low level. Lion level 4, like level 6 Lion has a lot of kill pick off potential that could lead to some turnarounds, but that's still a bit of a ways off. Gyrocopter cooldown level 6 with a TP may be the answer to the blame, but that is a big commitment. And this is where, like, these kill attempts from Alliance are just that a little bit earlier than Nubian normally ready for. They love to TP and counter gank those kind of plays, but that's normally around, like, the 7 to 10 minute mark, and they have a level 6 Dragonite, a level 6 Dragonite, which just hasn't quite come up yet for the newbie side. Seeing them hammer into this tier 1 and bottling them. As Howe wants to try and gain any advantage he possibly can, and <laughs> just look at that. We're almost six minutes in, and Tide is still sitting at level one. Tragic he's, stuff he's for KP. He's wishing, like, why didn't I buy an Iron Talon? What was I thinking? If he had an Iron Talon and just went level one jungle, he'd be level four right now with a ton of- Oh, dog, hello! Alright. Denies out the tower against three heroes. Oh, yeah, that catapult was helping out at all, yeah. Bulldog on point this game so far. Alliance in the previous games have used the Sunray to farm up for Ake over towards the large camp. That's been when Lotus has you know hero he can't really clear through them, but with the Sven available, giving him a lot of farm emphasis here and heading into well he's got a helm of iron will. Like it could be the helm of dominated to stack agents for himself, but he might have also picked up on this nice little armlet trend that we've seen from Sven's. This is a 
press tide. He's come mid just to leech XP. <laughs> he's like watching the team farm, not even expecting. Now he takes over the lane, but this is a telltale sign that Moo has rotated off. He hits level six, goes for a smoke with Tron, but this play almost like has to work. Newbie need to get a kill on Bulldog and ideally like transition into an objective or a tower. They are going to find Bulldog though. Yeah, he's pushing so well. He yeah, scouts them out. Oh, I, positioning there where he positions as close as possible to the tower while using the treants. To, to pop the smoke immediately and then he phase boot away. Just great play coming out from Bulldog. Instant movement though for Lions. They see the smoke rotation up through to the off lane, so they smoke and TP towards the mid, wrapping around and looking for this time. Shut him down a little bit, but they want to shut him down more. The movements oh, come TP in, the gyro. TP forward as well. S4 moves up Done. towards the high ground. Moves back and forth, down the Sunray on the two of them. The call down loud for the head. But the Tears needs his back from EGM. Moves is still lower and lower, and it's not going to die. The Ghosts do not chase through. Well, S4 buried by four. Hangs back on the loader. Here's God's strength. He needs to stick on the touch. The seven star four from Arcane's belly. Keeping how alive when Kaka somehow tethering through Mo and how gonna count their lucky stars that they drop. I think it'd be a lucky not to get him wiped there, to be brutally honest. That should have been dead gyrocopter, dead dragon knight, it looked like. Those heroes were just put way in over their head. Alliance is a bit unlucky not to get more kills there. They A few heroes who just didn't quite go down to the exorcism damage. S4 just running out of spirit siphons as well. Didn't have the best chasing potential as well with just just the brown boots and newbie, like you say. Thank their lucky stars for not giving up more. Kaka comes in for some heals to help just keep one or two heroes alive on about 50 HP. Boy, that is horribly wrong. Alliance were ready for that bait. Death Prophet, again, much like Bolt S4 this time, positioning him such that he doesn't get caught by the dragon. They get that instant dragon tail off, even with Alliance sitting behind S4 there, he still gets blown up by a cooldown rocket barrage. But he gets back to this fan, gets himself back in position, and Newbie now commit to another smoke. They really are going all in to find pickoffs to turn this game around, but Dire Vision just scouting out so much of this map gives Alliance an incredible amount of information right now. It's like a mirroring of the Observer Wars here. Alliance all towards that secret shop, but watch how and Chuan prep themselves. A little bit of a go here onto S4, but he is he knows. almost S4 clairvoyant knows. in the way that he moves himself back behind the tier one. And I guess the fact is, there's no one showing on the map here from Nubian. Yep. It's a topic that's come up a hell of a lot recently. It's, it's the knowledge game. It's the Shanghai Major, Nature's Prophets and your Beastmasters, giving that intel, knowing when people are missing off the map, but even more so and now with knowing when people aren't farming and showing. And look at Bulldog. He's farming aggressively and no one's come his way. So he's just like, well, look, no one's actually down here. They're all, they've all made this rotation towards the off lane to go for that kill. S4 knows it. The entire Alliance side know it, and they're just punishing me because of it. They're farming mid, they're farming bottom. Back in the jungle, getting him farm himself and just stacking up camps. So they even scanned their own jungle to see if they've, you know, maybe sidled there through the dire yep. jungle down towards mid. Lotus just taking a rape jungle swell. Well, okay, they're gonna fire top. Let's go to the radiant jungle. Make sure I can at least maintain my farm here. That's a good start from Lotus so far. Loda looking to make it great though with the armlet quelling blade. Farming himself through, like you said, this radiant jungle, but he still needs a fair few items and a little more ramp up time to build him into that beastly Sven that we've seen from him before, of course. Camera Bulldog available. Push down into the Spades and Drums are pretty much done, and they'll even, they'll even secure this with the God Strength. Yeah, worth, worthwhile doing, I, I imagine, at this stage. Just take down as fast as possible so you can go back to farming the jungle. It's just kind of an efficiency play coming out from Loda. He knows that Alliance kind of pick and choose fights to their liking, so not going to need the God Strength something in the next couple of minutes. KP at level 6, 10 and a half minutes in. It's been a rough ride. Got there eventually. Oh, cool down. Where's Jara throwing that? Just a oh, he's found a little, yeah. he's found a little stack. Just a double stack here, not too big of a deal for Alliance to lose this one. Radiant nice four, even popping the ultimate down on bottom lane for this tier two. Newbie still not reacting to what's going on. This is a, yeah, about to say a tower that Newbie definitely wanted to defend. S4 will team himself out. Three in themselves, forced out. Now, eight around the mid, so he's still at least maintaining his farm. Goes straight into an ogre club. 
Dragonlance? Uh, yeah, it looks Dragonlance. Band of Elven skin with it, so we'll see mm. a Dragonlance first time. It's kind of like the new drums for Gyrocopter in a lot of ways. I mean, he's picked up Windblaze as well to give him that little boost of movement speed. But... Another smoke from uh, from Newbie. This one, it wasn't underneath the Observer Ward, but the problem is there's so many Observer Wards in mid lane, in the jungle, in both jungles, that you it becomes very obvious when Radiant's Newbie are missing from the map. So even though you don't see the smoke, you can kind of sense it in a lot of ways. Process of elimination, if they're not there or there or there, where are they? Chun! Unlike him, it's on the Earth spike and... Lions are just dodging everything this game. It is so impressive to watch Look at the side how lane. they play around the smokes. Look at these side lanes! Bulldog's on the tier 2, top yep. lane is Sven getting in onto tier 1, and Noob, they're kind of corralled, you know, it's Alliance being almost sheep herders here, forcing Noob into this little narrow position where mid lane, converging into this tier 1, they could even get wrapped in on and actually initiated on the Turkey to dive forward, S4, Spirit Slime, on to Karkana, but they're already dead, Alliance gets through. Looking for the third, but Moo, he is too fast for them. Alliance hold on to the tier one though, and they gain so much from that, they could even walk into Roshan. It's the vision game. Alliance saw two heroes rotating bottom with their Observer Ward, and reaction to that is Puppet TPs back to his tier two tower bottom, gets back to safety while his team initiate on mid. Taking an advantageous team fight, Bulldog gets out safely. He has teleportation if his team need him to join up in the mid lane, or he can just continue farming. So, like you see, puppeteering, they're just keeping newbie in this mid lane where they can't get anything done. They're not taking tower. Alliance are out farming them. They're avoiding every smoke gank, and newbie yet to really connect with a single rotation, which is just so uncharacteristic of this newbie team, but really speaks to how well Alliance are playing. Prime the item on Earth Prophet is going to be the Veil of Discord and looks like it's fully done for S4. That is spell damage increase, but all dogs looking for Kaka up at top. Can the little ball of light bounce off into the darkness? No he cannot. The Treants will scout and Kaka without a uh, like to stand on will be dropped here and oh no. Well uh little tether. Little tether for uh, tether our game boots, I guess. <laughs> That's maybe the Oh yeah, uh, Veil of Discord on, on uh, Death Prophet. Good stats, and obviously the magic damage amp is nice as well, but everything about this item makes it very cost effective on the on Death Prophet. Maybe to finally get that T1 mid tower. They've been rewarded here or there by Alliance with some scraps, and I'm, these T1 towers feel like scraps because always we're seeing Alliance trading towers while finding kills, and newbie have to invest ton of just human resources every time they want to take these times. Always like three, four, five heroes to do so. Alliance even scanning behind that tier one. Taking the, the defense is coming in from new. We're very wisely backing off. And this is one of those, one of those kind of things in the game that hasn't been fully utilized up until this tournament really. And it's the, it's the first big tournament where we've seen it come into action a lot and teams realizing what they can do with it, spotting smoke ganks and really yep. shining a light on how useful it can be. The newbie strap is about to get a whole lot scarier though. They're gonna have what looks to be Shadow Blade on Dragonite for Moo. Gyrocopter's in pretty good fighting shape just by having his level 9 Dragonlance cooldown like Rocket Rider. He has a lot of spell damage, but as I say that, Alliance can secure themselves an agent. So newbie are probably gonna be looking to fight fairly soon. The uh, Shadow Blade pickup, but I don't think Alliance are gonna let them find pickups. If anything, Alliance may just to five ran around around the next exosystem when they've got Aegis on loader. And when that gold strength back up, I think you're right, gods. Pick up the Aegis. And Newbie is still waiting for an item on the Tidehunter. He's got his arcane boots up, but no blink, no force, no mech or anything in sight for him. And that's something that they have relied on previously is having KP farms. It's like super farms from the offlane. And that's normally the like, normally the what happens even just from talking to KP. It's like he understands the first five minutes of the game, he's often in a really tough lane, but it's like post laning stage process is very much farm and catch up, but he's had to take that to the extreme this game. He's been able to offer his team anything. He's died way more than he usually does in lane, and as a result, newbie really under the gun here. KP looks to be rushing a blink dagger. I think they're pretty much just going to be going all in on that first team fight or two with a blink dagger followed up with the cooldown from Gyrocopter. The DK running in with his shadow blade and moves. Yeah, he's got his. He just picked up a shadow blade. So, see what the next rotations are going to be. If you're a lion, you see this and you're like, okay, make sure we sentries down anytime we're pushing this five. You even consider getting an early this game. Alliance actually looking to take the fight 
two newbie before the initiation comes from them. Because this blink dagger is still yet to be built up by the Tide Hunter, and there's a tier one almost pre take for Alliance, but they do have to be you know, a little bit cagey with how they go about this. The very few defensive abilities back on them, and they are looking as like as how he goes in for the dive, but I don't know, was this worth it with a stun back on the Chuan? He will not lose his life, so yes, it was. Yeah, the follow-up wasn't there for Lotus stun. Rubik a little bit too far away. Telekinesis, but ultimately Alliance, they get one tower, they back off, they don't really lose too much. They've still got a good three plus minutes left on this Aegis, and they did, they got T1 with Exorcism on cooldown. So the next time they go for a push, it's insisted likely going to be a T2, but they have to be scared and worried about this Blink Dagger. KP now completes it. Is There's a smoke on Twine as well. I imagine the call is very much everybody group up as three and then we can relocate in the gyrocopter. That's the really nice thing about having the IO is you don't have to commit five heroes to a smoking. It becomes very apparent when you have five heroes smoke. We kind of saw that earlier where Newbie almost over smoked and wasted a lot of time farming. But once they clear this mid lane, wouldn't be surprised to see them go for a play and then the gyrocopter at top relocating in. Tide was holding onto his money and hasn't made the decision yet. Oh, but he's mech. He makes a snap Ooh. decision now to fully complete Let's the mech. Yeah, it must have been some indecision there, because like, otherwise you may well buy the components yeah. with some kind of build-up, but... I guess the team calls they... to wait things out and see how things go. I imagine the, this call is made because the Lions have an Aegis. If there was no Aegis on the side of a Lions, you pick up a Blink, and you smoke, and you take the fight to them, but... Taking into consideration, this Aegis was just picked up and has decent duration left on it. Maybe instead of going for the aggressive, they are going to slow things down and farm. I quite like the decision. Like, it, it's one of the two ways back in this game. Take fights. Head on, take it to Alliance, but that hasn't worked. So if anything, newbies going to be doubting themselves, and I think because of that, going the more farm oriented approach is going to work better for them. Well, that's your BKB for the gyro, but Van has picked up a Link Dagger, that form of initiation. Vitally important for Alliance to follow through with uh, S4 running forward. But this time around, Arcase Phoenix hasn't had the kind of stellar run through with the itemization. Still sitting on Tranquils, very poor indeed. Bottom of the net worth, in fact. Hasn't really picked up too much because, you know, previous games he's gone like 407 and found kills with Sunray. This time it's been a little bit more difficult to get his name up on the yeah, board. It's interesting seeing how different teams have played the Phoenix very differently. You've got your teams like your four position Phoenix players who get a lot more farm, get their early minuses, get their fast level 11s. Aki in a very different position. And against the BKB Gyrocopter, we actually see Gyro disassemble his Dragonlance to get the BKB. Very well be a BKB Gyro who just burst the supernova and Aki is just dead in a team fight. So he has to rely on like the physical damage threat of the Sven, the Death Prophet, as well as the Nature's Prophet Sprout to protect his egg. I love what I, I love watching Bulldog play Nature's Prophet because all the time he's like spamming TPs onto the enemy, trying to bait out like oh, I'm, I'm going to TP he up here, fun. just watch me, just, just just watch me TP up here, and it cancels it last sec. So you can see newbie like pinging out, he's TPing into these trees. I can see him where he's going, but Bulldog very aware. And he just, he just min-maxes the hero so well, like, every, he makes Sprout count, like, normally Sprout this hero looks like an okay spell, but he makes this Sprout look like almost Nature's Prophet spell at certain times, so. Move Alliance, onto the high ground we go. Uh, not long left on his agent though, S4, he's the one that's jumped and fingered down, there's the Sunray healing him up, but he's still taken out an Alliance, overstepping their bounds. Maybe just the touches. Yeah. Newbie were ready, they were prepped for that, and they all come back in again with the real okay 40 GM ripped apart! Alliance, oh, 20 minutes oh, in. Can it not going to go for the Ravager, it looks like. Oh, Chuan's hell. Blink Dagger combined. They knew about the Shadow Blade. They had a sentry. They were expecting DK to flank them from the north because they didn't put the sentry in the lane. They had it kind of to scout DK coming in from above. But Nubi just fights the head on. Mu just goes in with a standard in this situation. And then even Lion without a Blink can make that play just by having Impale thing from far away. The Blink made it a whole lot easier. But bit kind of over aggressive from S4 it feels like I mean, it's not entirely it's probably the team decision like put S4 with Exum on the high ground but they have no way to really save him the Sunray heal is this slow like slow over time heal the burst damage from finger of death too much they didn't even have to ravage if anything newbie could have thrown more spells to kill the death prophet and then taken the and then just their high ground to still not lose a fight you commit ravage plus call down plus finger to kill a, a death prophet it sounds kind of bad when there's a spend on the other team but it works because you're on your high ground defense also, the fact that that Aegis was expiring like 10 seconds after they pushed up on that high ground. Maybe they were, I don't know, maybe they're thinking about trying to bait Loader into uh, running into that fight and getting Newbie to battle into him rather than a Death Prophet instead. But regardless, 
Alliance, they have given away two juicy kills over to Newbie and they failed their first high ground push. They yeah. have to go back and kind of reset. There's going to be some worries on their side. KP's going to have a blink dagger, it looks like now he has the money to buy it at least. So either that or a full staff, I imagine. But the blink being the more likely choice just to get, give him a secondary blink first initiation to go on that death front lines. It's going to be a game where S4 will need to tank up as soon as possible. Goes to the Yules for now, but wouldn't be surprised to have him go into something like a BKB after this Yule Scepter, just because he needs the magic immunity. The first damage, Lion. The DK stun initiation, the tight ravage, the gyro cooldown, it's all this magic damage. Octarine Core cool. will have to wait. Uh, BKB up and B BKB's Dragonite is closing in on his Ogre Club and the Mithril Hammer ready. Have that ready very shortly. It started off so well for Alliance, it suddenly we're seeing them kind of falter a bit and... Do still have this kind of brute force lineup though. Like if, if you get into a 5v5 brawl and you get caught out, it, it's going to come down to vision and initiation like we've seen in this entire series. Who gets the jump, who catches whom out. And Alliance, they do scale well going into the late game. We've seen what Bulldog's nature's do as a split pushing machine. Not even just a split push, but he's going, he's been primarily prioritizing going for the, uh, oh, 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 set up by yeah. one, and it's an easy takedown. Yeah, just to, to finish that point, Bulldog has been going a lot for the Scythe of Vice and using this Maelstrom into Blink Scythe as an initiation tool. So he starts the fight with the Blink head. And these BK, because newbie love going for BKB cores. We've got Dragonite, Gyrocopter. Last game, there was BKB cores all over the place. They go for these armlet BKB heroes, and that's where Hex becomes an essential item to initiate because it prevents them from getting BKB off. Load up. He has become a little bit sticky as well. And Sven needs his Black King bar. I think both teams are realizing how important it is. And how goes back into the SN way, something that. We haven't seen that much come out of gyros, especially as, you know, a secondary, tertiary item if you count the dragon that he split into the BKB. It does give him a hell of a lot of stats to really withstand the initial brute force from Alliance that maybe could catch him out. The stats are definitely nice, hiding all that against the melee of the melee Sven is pretty nice, but this hero has received nerf for, nerfs for ranged heroes. I'm not sure if I still like it, the item as much. If it not for being like a gyrocopter who can there, kind of keep right clicking when the Sven. I kind of question this item, but even so, it's still not like amazing. He's not going to transition so well into a carry because of it is on top of that. But at this stage, I think Nubia are just wanting to pick up whatever deep cost effective items they can get now to fight because they recognize that Alliance are going to be looking to come at them again fairly soon. And that next Roshan is that Nubi will want to contest. It might just be a comfort. The other option, he had yeah, the Asher absolutely. already, it could be the could have been the Manta style, but Sanjin Asher has been a mainstay of Gyro for so long, but we'll oh. see Alliance. Loader jumps back up, throw the ball down onto Loader as well, the Ghost Next goes up. Uh, Loader dropping it, probably Loader, Sunray keeps him alive, RK holding this one out, Loader still up and running, turns back onto Al, still no one drops the Schwamm, chased out by S4, and moves in the mix of things, the Super Nova finally lands, oh, it's held out in the play! Alliance, they've killed off two and they've got no buyback by the one that chases on. That's Small Dog. Where's the Sprout? Long cooldown. Newbie, tail between legs. Back behind their tier two into tier three. But Alliance, that smoke is a catch. Yep. Gorgeous. Uh. It was great because it's a much better way to structure your team fight where it's Loader initiating him for the Blink Dagger. He then draws the attention. If it's S4 in the front lines, he gets first down. The big difference in that fight is that there isn't enough spells focused on S4, who's in exorcism form, and that's something you've got to deal with. He's much, he's a much bigger threat than Loader, but because Loader's in your right-click way, your immediate reaction is to first waste the mech just to save the Io, and then second, they have to throw the Disables of Lion to deal with the Sven on the front line. Sven it's just too much of a... and then S4 just gets ignored. If they can kill S4 there and use everything on him, that fight goes fine, or even for Nubi. Chasing around that Sven for days. Roshan, what's that? Another 25, 30 seconds or so. Alliance got a long time to wait. They will try and chase out the joint as Nubi realized the potential here. The scan... Oh, oh, there we go. Turns red. Alliance know they're incoming. And they'll realize also that they're smoked up, so preparation Ooh. for this fight, but they're... Another scan on Ake. Damn right there is. Phoenix wanders himself back up onto the high ground. Alliance 
You have the vision. You have the ability. Radiance the Nubia as they walk the themselves attack. into this. Neither team sees anyone. Time goes forward. The aggressive play, but he doesn't land the stun. And EGM will, you know, still mana drain. Not exactly what he was aiming for. Come on, just couldn't quite get the jump. And similarly, Moon DK wasn't close enough. Didn't have the ulti for. He needs to make ulti for four going into the Shadow Blade to get the range done. As a result, Nubia will be forced back. And they just concede Roshan with the TD's top. I say that they've got relocated, and actually this is a, a clear plan from them to leave three heroes bottom who can contest Roshan and then have the relocate to get in, but they've got to get there soon, otherwise they're not contesting. Alliance don't see them. Well, where are they moving from this bottom they're lane? They're sending an illusion, but I think Nubia perhaps underestimated Alliance is just tenacity to go for this Roshan. That is an illusion. Newbie. They're gonna get in there fast, not Ravage. And they will try and jump in. There's a good earth by Cassie. That's four Bulldog Blink. That's a Ravage catch for three. Kobe Blink in and the whole alliance makes him on the spin. He's got the creep and energy. They're back up from the ages. He's still on the floor. Brought by back from Arcane first. And drop for the loader in the mix of things. The gyro takes the ages. And how? The triple kill looks to clear up alliance. This Roshan fight has been disastrous for them. Gyro drops down to the Sunray. Lovely ability, but there's no dive, there's no escape. Trying to blink out. Oh, Moonlight gets pulled up. Okay, he gets the blink away, but an ultra kill for how? Beast moding there. I said to, I, you know, it's a great Ravager, but it's Trine who buys some time, blinks it, like leads in as a four position support. Squishy line, he's like, I'm just gonna take a gamble. Blink in the line, the line is approach and pitch. They run in with the tide, and then they just go for it with the, the relocate in and the tide ravage and S4 caught in the middle of it. Taken out at the start of the fight, and that's got to be how Nubia approached the fight. Burst down S4 first. That is the number one strategy every single time, and S4 is going to quickly realize BKB has to be his next item pickup. Even with Bulldog's great positioning, getting himself out of the pit with a blink dagger. It is rough stuff out. For Alliance, oh, I really saw that Sven in the, in the middle of like five heroes, he had the line for the cleave. Yeah. He just got trolled up, couldn't really do the damage back into them. He was just left alone, it was like Sven versus the world. And the Phoenix is also in the Roshan pit, which is a problem, because I think in that scenario, Phoenix would rather be Sunray in, in the Supernova, because as soon as they finish blowing up the Death Prophet, that egg is sitting there, wouldn't be taken out. And having a BKB on Dragon and Gyro means there's no worry about being able to kill the egg on it. You're always going to be able to bring it down if it's close enough to you. And the egg was inside the Roche Pit. When you're fighting at the Roche Pit as a fiend, you have to get the egg on one of the cliffs, on one of those kind of hard to reach terrain spots. And that was something you just couldn't quite manage to do. And what's the swing like in terms of an outworth and that? Because seven to nine now, a newbie, they do take advantage. Another spike back and forth. Three so bit experience. This is the big one there, gaining these big levels. Look at the Dragonite and the Gyro. Got the 17 on Gyro and DK. How many forms to Vaulty does he have? He's still level 15. So he's got the Frost Dragon, but I'll jump onto EGM. There's an nice initiation. Schwan and Sunray keeping the Grubic alive, but it's not going to be enough. The damage out. Schwan is just making plays happen. He gets the ward behind the tower. He's so keen to initiate, and he knows, like, even if things completely backfire, it's just a land that is being caught out. But he's finding pickoffs, putting Newbie in a great position in this game three decider. S4, where are you wandering off to? You are all alone down here, Newbie. I don't actually see where he's wandering off to. I won't be able to catch him. That's Scotty. Wow, this gyro is suddenly ridiculously far. And Incredibly tanky. The Scardi, this is the best kite that spent for days built. SMY plus Scardi are the two items that function so well on a gyrocopter when dealing with the meal carry who stick it up in your face. All he needs now is butterfly, so you can't touch this build. I like it. Get oh. a butterfly in the mix, and suddenly Sven is going to have a very tough time. Going to be able to do anything with it. Arcane rune for Dragon Knight. That's going to be nice for his ultimate if he can pop that in time. He didn't bottle it. I'm going to keep it on him, but. Nubi. Losing even the BKB from Bulldog. He knows he needs five items. The initiation is not going to be from the Hex. He needs something sooner to actually battle into Nubi within the next five minutes. Because you, you just know Nubi going to run at you. Yeah. They've taken down all but one outer tower. There's the tier two at bottom lane. And they will be trying to get up onto your high ground and take down your racks. Flying smoke, pushing out top lane. Bottom lane is something they have to be wary of, though, because yeah. Bulldog is really good focusing on keeping that one out. That's funny you say utilizing smoke. It feels like newbie always have the smoke the game. Finally, now, the first time I think they're out of smoke. 
six and a half minutes, which feels <laughs> right because I feel like every key fight, it's newbie getting a jump with the smoke initiations. They've been using smoke so incredibly well, and that's the thing which they won't have access to for some time, but they can slow things down now. They don't have to rush. There's no set they can test. They don't have an Aegis. They, they're in a position where they can continue to scale pretty well moving forward. Put the butterfly you mentioned the gyro on the gyrocop. The Dragonite can complete an Assault Crest, which is, again, further negate its impact in these fights. And it's... Just Sven, when it Sven's damage output is limited in the fight, it means you can entirely focus on the death prop of S4. If you can catch him with a table before he gets off BKB, S4 is going to struggle in these T-fights. He's also going to finish that BKB, which is close to completion, but not quite there. Sven was hunting for Bulldog, but Knight is probably hiding away in the trees and flapping himself around the map, but there's a little bit of a dance of death down there, the duel band. Newbie position themselves again now. This is Wisp with the relocate. They've got him paired up with the Dragon Knight. And they've got him paired up with a Gyrocopter. The other three that are towards mid, so it's going to be the Gyro and the Wisp to look to relocate in on top. Top of the tanky DK. Now, yeah. yeah, I like that. Like Gyro TP's bottom to continue farming and immediately Kaka's boom and headed bottom to back up the Gyro. Knowing that either A, Gyro might get ganked down here and will need a relocate save, or B, a C fight could break up middle and you need to relocate the gyro in. So we're going to see Io always sitting behind one of these key carries, typically the gyrocopter who wants to farm a bit more. Be very, very consistent and stable play coming out from Kaka's Wisp throughout this tournament. He's not a flashy play, doesn't aggressively relocate them as much as other players do, but he's always where he needs to be. Alliance seem very timid right now. Load up. From being the big boss now that, you know, 10 15 minutes pushing forward always, looking for the blink initiations, looking for these kills with a god strength. So at this point in time, being back on his watches and saying, well, I've got to wait for other people to catch up to him. He's, he's well farmed, he's just not as well farmed as Gyro. And instead of Sven, he's got to be, you know, 4 5k ahead of his counterpart by this point. Well, S4, 10k net worth, actually slipped behind this Dragon Knight. Yeah. Now, anyway, but the BKB's done. That's the big thing that you pointed out, is S4 does have that magic immunity now over on the Courier. Yeah, it's still, it's a money to pick up, but you still look at the big picture. Like you mentioned, the fact that he's under farmed as much as he is means he doesn't have that follow-up. I'm getting to the point where, okay, you've got your BKB, but now you've got to worry about the physical damage. There's an AC, as well as a farm jack up on the other team. If these heroes are on you, you're still a 13, 15, 1360 HP death prophet who may just melt regardless, BKB or not. Is going to struggle. He needs, like, perhaps either Nibbers or not Green Claw, both of them to some survivability. Initiation. A good Sunray, but the damage effort again from Newbie is just too much to withstand, and they are chasing through on this. Bulldog drums away. Load on S4 up on the high ground. They'll dive forward to the Phoenix to try to blow this down. But how? Even without his teammates in close vicinity, he is just rushing forward. The water lance is base, he knows what he wants and he knows how to get it. And I like that he's maxed the homing missile. This missile actually scales very well. It's heading towards the late game, takes a lot more hits to destroy. And can also just force preemptive BKB on like Sven. If you just spam it onto the Sven, it may force him just Radiant's to pop a BKB to engage in a fight to not get hit by it. <laughs> and even as you go longer, these BKBs are going to get shorter and shorter. So the homing missiles actually become a decent game stun. It's not a reliable stun by any means, but you've got to pay for that. It becomes like a follow-up stun in some ways that can be very pesky to deal with. A so clap for Bulldog <laughs> as he well, sniped the courier and there's one gauntlet on it. There hasn't been much to, to cheer for a while for this Alliance team, so the crowd here will take what they can. I will indeed. But it's Newbie who has great map vision and Alliance going to try bypass it with a smoke Ooh, out. They found Bulldog with a stun in the BKB as well. The clan turn the relocate comes through and S4 is done as well. It's on the BKB. Lorda turns back with the cleave damage. is not enough. S4 just being right clicked down like he's in the middle step. Too much to win down on Loader. Hell of a place with another Dragon Tail. The Supernova on the side of the Dragon Pack. KP Captain 2. Alliance. They're dropping like flies. Snoopy. It looks like they've cleared up this team fight with ease. Case is on. They won Ake. He'll get the TP out just that barely, but a very simply won team fight by Newbie. Is the story there? Yes, you have your BKB, but the right click's too much. He needs like even just a late mail there. I think would have been enough to hold on. Now Nubia on the Alliance high ground. There's no exorcism. There's no supernova. No god trick. There's nothing for Alliance even when they respawn. So it looks like we make 
get racked here. The one good news is that newbie, how very low in AD, moves to the story a bit low himself, but these respawn timers are going to work against the Lions. Which rack can they take? Oh, I get one, and I'll back out. I'm going to commit for more. How? BKB TP. There's nothing to stop this, right? Nothing actually nope. to go through that. No I like it. Ability. Safe play. He's already down to the five second BKB, or maybe it was a six second BKB, but either oh, yeah, way, it doesn't really matter about the duration at stage. Gets out safely. Picks up an MKB now as well. Double ravage for KP. Pressure off is done after such a crushing gaming stage that this side hunter has. Watching KP come back in such spectacular and significant fashion with these ravages. You know, we look at Chuan initiating and getting the, the kind of little pokes and prods into Alliance, and of course the, the farming power of Hao, as well as Mu. KP from the offlane has amassed quite an arsenal of items. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that has Level one at six minutes or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Alliance, almost a desperation play, sneaking into the road champion. There's no ravage for 45. Perhaps not so desperate. They know what they're doing. They know about that cool aren't they? they don't know about the refresher though. Moose gonna walk in here with the invis. He goes in with the AOV trying to get in case the pressure. The BKB from Baldo holds him in but loaded the target. Who's the focus? Who's gone? Who's dead? The electric for how continues S4 slowed by Moo with a super from the high ground. It's gonna do a little bit, but not enough. S4 ran into the spirit siphon. It's too bit of a lot of fair amount, but just look newbie! The hordes of Chinese players surrounding the Swedes! And Loda's back for round two, but he's got no BKB. Be no god strength, he's just got to get the hell out of here. They've got to ditch Roshan, they've got to just prioritize defending their high ground now, waiting for them to come back because this is not a fight they're going to be able to take. And you said it, the refresh from KP, Alliance were not ready for it, and they got demolished because of it. I know it's coming up in more like 30 seconds, but KP realizes, right, I have to refresh, we need this Ravage, and it works beautifully. Or team newbie as they look for that tier two in the bottom lane, all people observe behind the tower, knowing if Alliance you know, potentially want to try and defend, but also they'll be looking up towards this high ground and saying that's the three, maybe even two full lanes of racks that we want to take. They'll go for the safe instead, just retreat a little bit, reset. Oh, our TI3 champions have come come back from worse deficits, but would definitely be up there. And newbie. Got a few players you know a thing or two about winning TIs, and they're thirsty once again. It's some time since we've seen the name Newbie at the top of these premier tournaments, but they're doing it here at Epicenter, making a run in the lower bracket, and all it's going to take is really one more big team fight, and they can secure the deal. Buybacks are on cooldown on a lot of these heroes. Heroes like Death Prophet just have to buy out, picks up a late mail just to help, help keep up alive, because there's no having a buyback if you're not going to have exorcism. Then he used it to contest Roshan, but now just needs to pick up a data list, whatever he can get for the next fight. So Alliance are really all in, and with an eight just on out, that one team fight victory is not going to be too hard to come by. Chuan has whipped them into shape and got them away from those filthy RPGs. Get out of their system, and how? What's that he's picked up? Like, hey, you've got a juice cleanse. That's what that's what yeah. Chuan's done to this team. Juice cleanse. They come back. Strong. The cabbage soup cleanse. <laughs> Lots of kale, I'm sure, in their oh, diet. Lovely, lovely stuff. Oh god, the two oh, teams so close. Ow, jump on the low, the damage output, not enough to force that back. The tells me to back with the move with the cooldown. It's gonna land on Edson, bring back, and Edson's gone. Loader, not a leg that stands on, taken out, slowed and kited. They are both dead, but Alliance have to retreat. Oh, oh, they're okay. forward, they're gonna try that as well. Look for EGM, the sun is there for Moon. No, it's not quite. Our cable sunray to the high ground, trying to escape <laughs> the little birdie flapping away. I... Bulldog in the back, though. They stay out by the homing missile. Alliance support makes sick escapes there, but end of the day, that's a team fight where two carries go down, and we're just seeing how Paul Loader matches up against the SMY Scotty Gyro Cup. He doesn't have enough damage in that small BKB window. He's only got a five second window, and the Death Prophet can't really stand next to him. Four is just so squishy, so they wait out the BKB, then Loader gets first, and even during his BKB, Gyro's just holding his ground, right, having a right click battle with the Sven. He's not doing too much damage, but th the main thing is you're just keeping him locked down in place. Sorry, I'm just giggling at, uh, giggling at Bulldog. The home missile chased him half the map, and he does the oh. little taunt where he does the jig with the staff after he gets, you know, bonked nice. on the head. Oh, good stuff. Forever cheeky guy, Admiral Bulldog. He may have his memes, but newbie put together another win streak here after losing game number two. And maybe shut up the Empire Twitter guy. <laughs> he has been on their case the past couple of days. 
Uh, high ground they go. No lion with them, but I don't know if they need lion. They've got double ravage. They didn't even have to use grabbing that last team fight. But I don't know if they even had it. Nice tier three in ranks are dropping so fast. How and move. Those two unkillable here. Uh, it's going to be down to this Death Prophet to uh, position herself nicely in the front of the team fight. Waiting for Loader and Bulldog to swipe him to the side, but Moo, he's already See invisible. Bulldog. Oh, Nubile knows he's coming. Bulldog with a BKB aggressive claim to cast up, and they can't box him down. He's going to TP out. Oh, they're going to finish oh, him off. No, they're not. Barely escaping. On a beasting of hell. Away with 50 HP, and now Nubi moved back up on the racks. They know the Bulldog is healing. They know there's no BKB on him, and they know the initiation power of the lines has diminished his speed as they go on the EBGM. They're going to escort the Supernova is down for Loda. Loda, control the taken out! There's no buyback on the fence! Alliance! 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 And they might just lose the game up there because of a double ravage from KP holding on to the second one. But it's Bulldog that's the last one standing and newbie! Take game three! As Alliance tap out! Oh, a tense fish! We had to have sweating in the first 15 20 minutes of this game. They look like a flat team there, unable to find kills. Their first two to three smokes, all unsuccessful. Alliance did such a perfect job keeping away from them, but eventually Newbie hit their item timings. How, to me, the MVP of this series, his Sven, his gyrocopter, game after game, this guy just delivered. And he stepped up when Moo, for the first time in this tournament, but like, just wasn't playing to his full capacity, but boy, was that an incredible showing. Honest, but you gotta say, his